Despite those Durham report findings, the Washington Post is standing by its Pulitzer Prize winning reporting on its Trump Russia stories as calls grow for the awards to be taken back. The Pulitzer Prize given to the Washington Post and New York Times should be taken back because the entire episode was politically motivated crap. That's not something you should get a Pulitzer Prize for. Fox News contributor Joe Concha joins us now. Good morning, Joe. You know, I asked Todd earlier, I was like, so are they going to give it back or can it be taken away from them? And he said, Ashley, no, they're not going to give it back. It's not going to be taken away. It's like taking a picture with the Heisman Trophy. Once it's done, it's done. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great analogy. Thank you. I believe the <laughs> University of Missouri would be proud, uh, or Dartmouth in, in Todd's case. Uh, look, this is called the hubris of the defeated, right? Uh, I mean, imagine this. Standing by 2 plus 2 actually equals 5, or the sky is green, and swearing that you're still right. Here are the facts, and they are readily apparent to anyone sane or sober, that the Trump-Russia investigation should have never been launched. It needs capped a presidency for most of its term based on evidence that did not exist. Yet many in the media are still defending it and, and, and covering it myopically as they did for all that time. And this is why trust in media from the conservative side is now in the single digits. The messenger simply cannot be trust anymore, Todd. Well, look at these numbers. I mean, this is absolute insanity. Some of the mainstream media awards for their Russia probe coverage. The Washington Post getting not one, not two, but ten Pulitzer Prizes, a George Polk Award, and two Murrows. Times, New York Times getting 10 Pulitzer Prizes and a George Polk Award. And PBS NewsHour getting a Peabody Award for its series Inside hmm. Putin's Russia. Joe, would you go so far as to say the media elite was so quick to award their own for this coverage because they really wanted to validate it as quickly as possible in light of the fact that maybe they had some reservations about it? Hmm, precisely, Todd. It's like those 51 intelligence officers that swore that the Hunter Biden laptop was absolutely Russian disinformation without ever, you know, examining the laptop or, or seeing the evidence, right? And and that was 26 awards that you just counted there. 25 of them were by the Washington went to the Washington Post and the New York Times. The Washington Post has never endorsed a Republican presidential candidate in its history. The New York Times last endorsed a Republican presidential candidate in 1956, okay? That was a pretty long time ago. That was Dwight Eisenhower over Adelaide Stevenson. So, yeah, of course, these outlets serve at the pleasure of the Democratic Party. If not, then maybe they would endorse, I don't know, Ronald Reagan over Walter Mondale or George W. Bush over John Kerry or pick your Democratic candidate here and, 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 and put it into this equation. Instead, that's the proof right there that if they can't even endorse any Republicans over the last either never in the Washington Post case or the New York Times in, I don't know, let's do the math, 44 plus 23, uh, I don't know, that's 67 years. Th th that says it all, Ashley. Yeah, let's, let's quickly validate this false narrative in order to add a veneer of truthfulness to something that turned out to be absolutely false and based around a lie. You also took a very big risk doing uh, math on national television, Great Joe, point. so good, good for you. Great but point. we have to talk that about Mayor Eric Adams. He's no longer a Biden surrogate after directly criticizing the president, of course, on the migrant crisis. Listen. Where the heck go. is the president of the United States? Uh, that, that is a good question. This should not be happening to New York City, Chicago, Los Angeles, and the other big northern cities, and really should not be happening to El Paso or Brownsville, Texas. Mm. No city should be carrying its burden. This is a national problem, and it needs a national solution. I mean, Joey's right. Nobody should have to deal with this. Um, but how bad of a blow is this to the Biden reelection campaign that one, a mayor of one of the most, if not the most liberal city in the United States mm. is like, I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm, I'm out because of your policies with this migrant crisis. Well, for starters, Eric Adams then should declare that his city is no longer a sanctuary city, and I don't endorse that policy anymore. I mean, the words are nice, but back it up with some actions, Mayor. But but who knew that the Biden administration, Ashley, would become the 2023 version of, you know, mean girls, right? So petty, so vindictive. I mean, Eric Adams, mayor of New York, he has the audacity to criticize this administration for their handling of the border crisis because it's affecting his city just like it is affecting Chicago, Washington. They keep saying they don't have the capacity 
the resources to handle this influx. And it's gotten so bad to the point where now dozens upon dozens of public schools have to house illegal migrants in their gymnasiums, which I'm pretty sure, you know, that's not the reason why they were built. So uh, th this is why a solid majority of Democrats do not want Joe Biden and this administration to run again for president and have this kind of power because they feel that the president's too old, his team is too incompetent, and quite frankly, they don't have the maturity to have the power that they do, Todd. And those parents at those schools are ticked. Oh, they should be. Pennsylvania yeah. Senator John Fetterman getting some attention for this moment during a hearing yesterday. Watch. They went to go to Hawaii's after there was a crash of your bank, and I couldn't believe it. It is, it is an inside, is it an inside joke? No, no matter how incompetent or how greedy, the, the government will always bail you out because we can't crash the economy, much the way SVB was argued that it was going to crash. Is it a staggering responsibility that, uh, the, that the head of a bank could literally, could literally crash our economy? Fetterman spokesperson telling Fox News Digital, quote, we have been clear for literally months and months that John continues to have auditory processing issues due to the effects of his stroke. Joe, your reaction? So resign. Resign if he still has these problems. For the good of your family, right? John Fetterman twice now has been in the hospital for extended periods of time because clearly he has not recovered from the massive stroke he had about one year ago. So, you know, you could dunk on Fetterman. Oh, wow, look at him. You know, he, he, he doesn't have the ability to do this job. You don't make jokes here. What he should do is resign for the good of his own health. He has kids. He has a wife at home. Stop doing this to yourself. It's embarrassing for the country. It's embarrassing for you. Get well and then run for office again if you feel you want to still serve your country, guys. Joe Concha, live for us here on a Wednesday. Joe, Thanks, thank Joe. you very much. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.